Again, welcome to Research Methods in Computers and Society. This is CS312. Again, this lecture, we are going to discuss about the measurement errors, reliability, and also validity. Again, this is Unit 5 lectures, which cover Chapter 5 of our course textbook. So our main objective is to recognize measurement errors and describe how to categorize them. Also, we are going to compare and contrast the inter-rater reliability, test retest reliability, and also internal consistency reliability. Again, we have three types of reliability. Also, we are going to analyze the different types of validity. That's a phase validity, content validity, construct validity, criteria validity, concurrent validity, and predictive validity. So again, this is a very short lecture. First, we, we will go through the measurement errors. Normally, measurement of errors occurs when we are not using the correct tool to collect our data, or the questions we have for our participants or subjects in our research studies uh, when they are not the right questions or we are not getting the right answers based on the question. Also, we are going to test the reliability. So anytime we mention reliability, we mean that we can do the same research or the same experiment and we are expecting to get the same answer. So when we are doing the same experiment more than twice, at least twice, and we get different answers, that means the experiment is not reliable. So reliability main goal here is that anything we do, if we do it the same method, this, the same way, at least twice or more, we should get the same answer. So again, reliability doesn't really measure the correctness of our studies, but rather it's telling us the tools that we are using are reliable because we are getting the same answer. Then validation is what will help us to again validate our studies. Validation will measure the correctness of uh, our studies. So let's start with the defining the measurement error. Here we say the measurement error occurs when we do not collect data that represent the reality of what we are measuring. So again, the measurement error occurs when we do not collect data that represent the reality of what we are measuring. And so this can lead to a bias in our data correction, which we normally use the term, the representation of the data. Uh, again, it's, it's a bias. A very example will be uh, if we want to follow some studies that was done in, a, let's say, a political party in U.S. here, we have Democrat and Republican. Now, if a Democrat is part, passing a bill and we want to see how the public supports it, uh, we don't want to go to an area where we know at least 80 percent of the population are Democrats, or we call it the blue state. We don't want to go the area that we know majority are Democrats, because again, we may get a, a result that we already know, which means they are going to support Democrat decision, whether it's right or wrong. Likewise with the Republican also. So our main goal, we, we want to go to an area where we can say it's a swing state or swing area where we are 50-50 of Democrats and Republicans. In this case, again, our data will be well representing the population. So again, very important, the measurement errors, again, it can occur in many ways. One, the tools that we are using to collect the data. Second, maybe the location, the geographical location where we are going to collect the data the data will not be well represented uh, the whole population. Uh, normally we say this occurs because we may not ask questions again or collect data in the right way. Also it's very important, important to understand the magnitude of this error. 
so we can again better interpret our study findings. So then we have at least two types of measurement error. The first is the random error. Yes, if we say random error is again inconsistent, inconsistent and has no pattern and usually minima. Again, that's why we call it random. It can happen random, randomly. There's no any pattern and it's inconsistent. Also, it applies only to a handful of answers and it may reflect social desirability. That is when people feel like they should answer a question in a particular way. And this is again very a disadvantage. Um, we, it depends on how we again we set questions. So we may set a question that again, people may feel that they should answer the question in a, in a very specific way. Then the second error is called a systematic error. Systematic error normally indicates a measure is not accurately measuring a concept. Again, this can relate to the measurement we are using or the way we are collecting data or other environmental factors. And this is a very common error system. As an example I was making by politics, Democrat and Republican passing a bill, we go to the area of Democrat or Republican, that's not, that can give us what we call the systematic error. And it can be issue of environmental factors. A random error, also it occurs not too often, but again, this is an error that can occur inconsistent. There's no any pattern. And here we say usually minimal, again, doesn't occur often. Systematic error is very common. So how do we min minimize the measurement error? The first, at least we should conduct a pilot study. Then we test our measurement tools. Uh, it can be a, a regular tool to collect the data or it can be a questionnaire survey questionnaire. But we need to have a, we need to test our tools, either a questionnaire survey or a, a regular tool. Again, we need to test it. Then so we need to check for data entry errors. This may often happen when we are in, entering our data into a computer system. For example, we are trying to get an age and the participant said is 40 years old and by mistakenly I type zero twice. So I enter 400. This can be again an error. So check for data entry errors when you are entering information collected by hand into a spreadsheet, that's into a computer system. Also, if you had questions to your measurement tools that measure similar constructs in a different ways. So next we go to the reliability. So what is a reliability? Anytime we say something is reliable, it means again, Anytime we do the same thing over and on, over and over, we get the same result. Then we know it's reliable. This does not mean it's correct or it's wrong. And reliability main goal is to test the tools that we are using. If I'm using the tool in the wrong way, but anytime I do the same way, I'll get the same result. That means the tool is reliable. So here we say the consistency of our measurements. The reliability is the consistency of our measurement. So if a tool yields the same result, even if used with different participants, populations or setting, this means again, it is reliable. We have the same tool, we use it in a different geographical locations or different populations, but we get the same result, so it's reliable. So reliability does not mean accuracy. Again, reliability again does not mean it's correct or it's wrong. So here yeah, we say whether participants' answers are free from errors, we don't know. But what we know is that again, if we are doing the same thing over and over, we get the same result. 
So measure reliability, there are three ways here. We have the inter-observed or inter-rater reliability. Here, the multiple researchers will collect the data and consistency is measured. Uh, consistency across observ uh, observers should be very high reliability. Then test retest reliability. So we collected data at a multiple time point with the same participants. Then consistency across the administration will give us the high reliability. So the whole goal again with reliability is that we have to do something over and over again. And we are expecting to have the same answer or the same result. Then that system is reliable. Uh, another one is internal consistency again, reliability. We need to achieve, achieve by accent by the same variable using more than one question. So next will be validity. So validity is more or less like validation. We want to validate our result if it's correct or wrong. So this refers to our ability or the ability of our data collection tool to capture and measure the construct or the phenomenon of interest. So previous research can inform how best to measure a construct. For example, how we will measure acculturation. Or when considering validity, be sure to again consider participants' right to have their own values, attitudes, and opinions. And normally in computer science fields, when we want to validate something, it means we want to check the result if it's correct or wrong. So we have different types of validity. The first one here is the phase validity. So here, when researchers have decided a tool is an accurate measure of construct or question, and also subjective assessment of the validity of the measurement instrument will be the phase validity. Again, when researchers decided that a two is an accurate measure of construct, or measure of a question, then that is second phase validity. Then we also have the content validity, which again, will depends on the content of our research. So yeah, the extent or the level to which measurement tool captures all aspects of the construct being tested. So the content of the experiment, all aspects of the constructs being tested or measured. So example here can be in a course, uh, final exams, a professor may include questions from all the chapters, vessels, just some of, some if it is test, if, if the test is to have a high content validity. We also have the construct validity. Yeah, we're going to measure the level or the degree to which the measurement tool truly measures the constructs in question. So again, the me this will measures the level or the degree to which the measurement tool truly measures the construct in question. So we can see that again, validation is we want to prove or we want to check whatever we are doing is right or wrong. But reliability means we want to check that what we are doing, if we do the same thing over and over again, we are getting the same result. We may do it wrong, we may do it correct, but that's not our concern in reliability. Reliability means do something at least twice, get the same result. It's okay. So here we say some constructs are easy to measure, others again are not easy. So for example, measuring a person's level of happiness will not be that easy, it will be very difficult. Uh, again, the main reason will be happiness, uh, different cultures perceive happiness in different ways. What makes people happy can be different based on geographical location of the people, their culture also. So, construct validity is very, again, 
some constructs again are easy and some are not. Also, we have the criteria, concurrency, and also predictive validity. So the criteria validity is uh, again the the main word here is criteria. Criteria. So this is concerned with creating a new measurement tool for console that already has a measurement tool in place. Then concurrent means when participants answer similar on two different tests. So it's concurrent to things maybe going together. So it's when participants answer similarly on two different tests, a traditional one and a new one you are creating and testing. Predictive, again, to predict in the future. Here we say the ability of a new measurement tool to achieve results that are comparable or better than those achieved at an old existing measurement tool. Now, selecting a valid and reliable measurement tool, that is our main goal in any research, especially when we are going to collect our data. The data collection process, we need to make sure the process is reliable, which means if we collect, we do the same thing twice, we get the same result. And also we should be able to validate it to check if it's right or wrong. So clearly defined here, we should clearly define our construct, which I think is very, very important to define our construct. It should be very clear. Then we should be able to do our literature review. As we said earlier, literature review is like the backbone of any uh, research studies because that will give us the background knowledge of what we are going to study or whatever our experiment is. Uh, we may see some previous experiment that has been done and it's related to our studies or studies that we are doing now, or maybe similar to what we are doing. So conducting a literature review and also identify measurement instrument for similar consort is very important in order to have again a valid and reliable measurement tools. Also, we should evaluate the instruments to ensure they are measuring our constructs. Read the literature again to assess each instrument reliability and validity. And also ensure the instrument you select is acceptable to your population. So again, this will be the conclusion of our Unit 5 lectures. Again, this Unit 5 lectures cover Chapter 5 of our course textbook. And it's a very short chapter. Main thing, we should be able to measure our errors. And measuring our errors go with the reliability and also validation of our process of either collecting data or doing the research. So again, wish everybody the best. If, if you have any question, you can post it in the Blackboard. And thank you.